Hey everyone, it's Jessica from Pretty Prints and Paper, and today I'm going to be talking about how I write in different styles. Um, I'll be using three different brush pens um, just to demo for you how they write, and that will be the Faber-Castell brush pen in a beautiful cobalt turquoise, the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pen, and the Zig Brushables Dual Tip Brush Pen. Um, when I started lettering more formally last year, I quickly found that there were a lot of styles. Um, they looked very different and they range from more traditional uh, copper plate script to more loose personal modern style. And I had a hard time figuring out kind of how to distinguish all of those different things as I started lettering. So. I am by no means a studied expert. There are definitely um, other calligraphers out there that have a lot more formal training. Um, these are some of my personal tips and just easy ways that I differ in styles across um, different work. So I will link to some awesome resources down below or on my blog um, So if you want to get some more official training I would call that so um, I think of the baseline I'm just gonna draw on there I'm using Rhodia grid paper because it takes ink so well it's super smooth so I know it's not damaging my brush tips um, and it comes highly recommended to, um, by a lot of people this is certainly not m only my opinion that these uh, pads are the greatest <laughs> for practicing uh, and then I will do another baseline here and then for comparison down here um, the word I'm going to be using today will be um, creativity and we'll use that for the basis of the words. So when you think about more traditional calligraphy, the way that I think of traditional calligraphy is there's the baseline and then there's a slant. There's a traditional italic slant. For copper plate, I think it's 55 degrees. So to practice that slant, which is very difficult for me, I just kind of draw in these angles. And that is where I want to match all my downstrokes. That's what creates that cohesive look, is when all your downstrokes are angled in the same way. It's very aesthetically pleasing. So I will try to stay true to that by using this brushable pen. So you see my attempt at keeping my downstrokes in parallel with these angle slants. And that's how you create a more italic look. And then the next thing you work on is spacing your letters in between so that there's an even amount of spacing and even heights across, um, which helps when you're practicing on the grid paper. Um, so if you could see, I love this pen because it's a little firmer tip than the Tombow, um, which gives you still enough flex for filling up space like this, but a little bit more control, in my opinion. And so moving into what I consider modern calligraphy, instead of this slant, it's more of an up and down. So things are much more 90 degree. And for this, I will use the Faber-Castell brush pen and show you how that might look. So 
So this tip, it feels like it's actually bending more like flat completely when you push down, but the colors that it comes in are just absolutely beautiful. So if you want to try them out, I highly recommend. Um, but you can see all of my down strokes are straight up and down. There's obviously many ways that you can vary this style even in terms of pulling the letters apart and having more spacing so it's a little more loose um, or more narrow up and down. You can square off some of the edges of the things like the A and that's what you might learn from copper plate. So we can get into a whole other thing with that but um, basic straight up and down. And now this other thing that people um, that took me a while to do was this bouncy look, right? So um, to do that, this is not my tip. I can't remember though where I saw it, um, but it helped me visualize how I wanted to do a bouncing look. I think it might be Lindsay from Postman's Knock because I mean, what tutorial hasn't she done? She is amazing. So um, I'll try to share how I think of this bouncing look. Um, and I will be using the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pen to illustrate this. Um, I don't really consider it very mathematic or anything, but um, you using these lines as a way to think of how far your letters might be dropping to create the bounce. So I'll show you a little what I mean by that. So this might hit this first line and then I'll drop the R down. Maybe I'll do the E a little higher up. If I drop the T really low. So you can see it kind of hits in different spots. Um, you can drop kind of in two different places. You can kind of drop the front end of a letter or like the tail end of a letter, which is what I tend to do. But for things like a Y, for example, you could always drop not the first, but the second. Um, if, I can, if I can even do it. I always tend to um, drop this tail end instead of the front. But you see how that might help you visualize how you can do more of a bounce in your lettering um, to create kind of a fun, whimsical look. Um, these brush pens are awesome if it really teaches me control because it's real br brush bristles, so um, it responds quite a bit to your pressure. Um, the colors also are really vibrant and awesome, so I highly recommend those when you get used to varying the pressure in your hand. Um, that's all I've got for you today, but I um, hope that you can play around with some of these styles and practice and help you distinguish what style is yours. Um, I admire a lot of artists on Instagram and on blogs and stuff, which I'll link below um, or and on my blog in the long version, but these are just some of the tips that help, have helped me discern my own style and vary the looks across different work. So that's all. I will see you in my next video.